So has anyone gotten any of it? Or are we just starting with number one? Or I just started on my own, so I okay. want to start at the beginning. Perfect. So pressure ulcer staging. Ugh, guys, this test is the grossest one of the semester. So it's on page 1180 for pressure ulcers. Yeah, and the descriptions. You guys yeah. are going to want to know how to describe them. Because they're not going to have pictures on the test. It's going to be a description. So, um, for this test, like, pages 1179 to, like, 1183. I mean, I don't know if you guys can see. There's a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, I have a lot of stuff highlighted. So you're going to want to know a lot from those pages. Um, but what are kind of the general, how would you describe a stage one pressure ulcer? It's non-blanching mm -hmm. and the skin's intact. Yeah, and that's the most important thing, skin intact. And by non-blanching, like the way you check that is you like put your index finger, push it in and if it, and then remove it and if it, how fast it comes back white or how do you do that? Um, so non-blanchable means that when you press on it, it does not go white. It doesn't go white. Blanching is the white. Mm -hmm. It just stays red and kind of irritated. Um, cause like for me, like I press right here, goes mm -hmm. white, kind of slowly goes back to my pinkish skin color. That's blanching. Okay. That white is so blanching. So when it doesn't blanch. Yeah. So if you have a question where they say, you know, you roll the patient over, you see a red area around their coccyx, you slightly press on it, it's blanching. That is not a stage one. Okay. So that would be just a what? That would just be area pre stage one. Okay. You would want to start turning them because it could turn into a pressure ulcer, but it's not there yet. yet. Okay. So be sure that, you know, in your description that it's non-blanchable, which means you press lightly on it and it doesn't turn white, it just stays red. And so does that mean that there's no blood return there? If, um, or what, what does that mean? Like I just think it means it's so broken down and inflamed that it just stays red and inflamed no matter how hard you press on it, kind of. Okay. So I think... You know, because at that point it's so like swollen and irritated that you can't like occlude off this, cause the there's capillaries. A lot of, yeah, right. I think that's the case. Yes. So be aware that you could have a question about like something that sounds like a pressure sore, but it's not one yet. So, but you still do the same interventions technically, like turn them every two hours and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Um, but I like how you said that its skin is intact. Stage. Oh, sorry, I didn't even put a one there. Stage one. Stage two is also just the skin. And so for these two, the nursing diagnosis that you might see would be impaired skin integrity. Because stage one and stage two are both still just dealing with skin. You know, we haven't gotten to tissue, deep tissue yet. So what is a stage two pressure ulcer? It's a par partial thickness, and like I, from what I understood, kind of is so, like a blister. Skin has reached the point of not being intact. I don't think it looks like a blister, but it kind of reminds me of like a sunburn, and when your skin starts to peel off, you okay. know. So when you guys see it in like the hospital setting, it kind of just looks like the top layer of skin is kind of like peeling off. So. By stage two, the skin's not intact. There's nope. like sloughing of the skin. Yeah. And just so you guys know, barrier cream is a really good um, option sometimes to prevent like, you know, urine getting on the skin or protecting the skin when it's intact. So with the stage one, I can still use barrier cream, but once I get to two, three, four, I can't use barrier cream. Anytime the skin is no longer intact, I can't use barrier cream because that would just increase my risk for infection, infection, right? I'm putting something kind of wet and, ha you know, has maybe bacteria could live off of the things in it. I don't know. But just don't ever want to do that with non-intact skin. So stage one only. Mm-hmm. Yep. 
Barrier cream is a really good option for your incontinent patients when you want to keep urine off of their skin and stuff. So, okay, stage three. So now we've gotten into the tissue. What layer of tissue are we now in? Sub Q. Sub -Q. Yep, sub Q. So stage three and four are in the tissue. So you might see an impaired tissue integrity. for that one. And stage four, what what are we in with stage four? That's where you're seeing bone and mm -hmm. muscle and gross. Mm -hmm. That's like really bad. Yeah, really, really bad. Muscle and bone. Okay, so an undermining and tunneling with both of those. Yes. So does everyone understand what undermining and tunneling is? Undermining is like where you have a lip basically around yeah, it. Yeah, there's like mm -hmm. folds and you can like it like tunnels away from just the kind of like if your opening is right here you have underneath the skin you can have like these tunnels and underminings that go outward into the muscle and fat and stuff so That's undermining that what you're saying undermining. yeah like you wouldn't see the undermining you know this is under the skin but it just starts kind of growing so is that in stage three and four or just and in four three? usually four. stage four but it can be present in stage three Whereas tunneling is where it's actually going through the, the tissues more. Yeah, yeah. 